So what are you guys running for your home defense setup? That's something I really want to know. Uh, is it just a pistol or do you have a pistol to fight to something bigger like an AR-15 or an AK-47? Are you old school and just running a shotgun? Sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you're rocking for your home defense setup because that's what we're talking about this time. We're going to be talking about my current setup, the things that I'm going to do to change that setup, the reasons why coming up. Hey guys, thanks for swinging by. I always appreciate you clicking on these videos. You don't have to, but you did, and that is pretty awesome. So we're, we're just gonna jump right on into this video and start talking about my current home defense setup. Now, this has been something that has been kind of evolving over the last, I'd say, probably about three to three and a half years. My very first home defense AR pistol setup uh, was an Aero Precision X15 or their mil-spec uh, receiver set. And I've got a video right here if you guys are interested. But my current EDC, or not EDC, but home defense setup is this guy right here. It is the Aero Precision M4E1. Now. You guys know that I am a huge Aero Precision fan. If I could be a shill for them, I would. But they're not paying me, and I, you know, I I, I would sell out to them. Probably probably cheaper than what you would expect. <laughs> but seriously, I have four Aero Precision AR-15s. There's one right there. Here's one. I've got an M5E1, which is their 308 receiver set version. You guys seen that video as well. And then we have a newer version we'll be getting to here in just a little bit. So I thought I'd take you kind of on a tour of what's going on with this setup, kind of the idea that I had with this setup and then go from there. So let's start from the danger end and work our way back to the backside, which everybody loves. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, the very first thing is I have a dead air Sandman uh, flash hider. Uh, this is obviously there because I have a Sandman S suppressor with my FFL right now. So hopefully, politically, nothing changes and I'm able to bust that thing out of FFL gel by the end of the year. But it's kind of a day-to-day -day type of thing. That is attached to a 11.5 inch uh, carbine length, 1 and 7 twist, ballistics advantage barrel. Now, this barrel is going to be pretty much an aero precision barrel. Ballistic advantage and aero precision are basically the same company, uh, just kind of with different names, kind of like Geisley and L ALG. Same but different, right? If you buy a completed AR uh, from aero precision, more likely you're going to get a ballistics advantage barrel. So that's what I went with. And the reason why I went with 11.5 inch is that extra inch is going to increase velocities more so than a 10.5 inch barrel would for 5.56. Um, it's going to stabilize that round a little bit better. You're going to get more accurate shots than shorter length barrels. So those are kind of the reasons why I went with it. But it's not a 16 inch barrel that uh, would be even more accurate or a 20 inch barrel that would be even more accurate. This is still in that nice pistol length that everybody is uh, pretty stoked about right now. So yeah, that's kind of the new hotness. That's what I'm running. Um, dash to the upper receiver is going to be the Aero Precision Advanced Handguard. I like it for two reasons. Number one is it has a bigger diameter than most handguards, uh, so it has more real estate for me to really get a good death grip on it if, <laughs> if I want to. Uh, and the second reason is where it attaches to the upper receiver, it creates a continuous Picatinny section. Most of like, like Colt 6920 or just you know, any standard mil-spec upper receiver with uh, the handguard is usually going to have that really long Picatinny section right here. This doesn't, and that's something I really love about the attention to detail with Aero Precision and this setup. So that is pretty awesome. Daniel Defense fixed front sight post and then Olight PO Pro. I've got a video on that. You can check it out right here if you're interested. But um, for home defense, I think this is going to do just fine. I'm not going to kick doors in in Afghanistan or anything like that. So it's got a pressure switch and it is going to be 
just fine. So, all right, moving back, we've got the Sig Sauer Romeo 5. Love this. This is a great budget option for a home defense setup. Comes in right about 120 bucks. Most of the things that I'm going to be talking about can be found over on fitandfire.com, uh, which is my website. If you guys are interested, it goes to some affiliate links. Trying to save you guys some money. Uh, at the same time, uh, I get a small commission off of it. It supports the channel, so that's pretty cool. And then I think, if I remember correctly, I have this site in the description uh, over to Amazon as well. So uh, take your pick. Either one will uh, get you there. So that's cool. And then on the back side here, I have the Maytech or Matech uh, rear flip-up site, however you pronounce it. And I really like that because... It uh, is exactly the same rear sight that I had while I was in the military. I'm used to it. I understand how to use it and have always really, really liked it. All right. Let's get into the internals. Uh, bolt carrier group is going to be an aero precision bolt carrier group. Uh, I like keeping the receiver bolt carrier group and barrel kind of the same. That's something I've learned over the last few years. Kind of keep those the same. It really helps with quality, accuracy, that type of stuff. Lower parts kit is going to be Aero Precision Mil Spec Parts Kit. And then it has an Geisley SSAE. I almost said ALG, but it's a Geisley SSAE trigger. And then a Geisley supercharging handle. So big fan of Geisley. Really like them. K2 Magpul um, pistol grip. I like the shallow angle on the K2s. Uh, it just really fits my body posture and, and how my body is set up. So I really like that. And then on the back side of it, we have the SBA, SBA3. I always get the nomenclature messed up. SBA3 from SB Tactical. Now, I think this is probably one of the best braces that SB Tactical has ever put out. Uh, I do have a different one on my new setup, and we'll get into that here in just a second, and I think I'm going to like it even more. I don't necessarily think that it's better, but I think I'm going to like it more, and I'll explain to you why here in just a second. The sling on it is a War Machine uh, sling that I was able to pick up from a uh, tack pack, so that's pretty awesome. And this thing has run flawlessly. Um, about the only issue that I've ran into is I had some failure to feed issues, but that was complete operator error. Uh, I didn't have uh, I didn't have it um, pretty much lubed up as well as I should have. Uh, that was while I was at Tactical Responses Fighting Rifle Course and had ran a thousand rounds through this thing in like two days. So that is one of the issues that I ran into, but it was quickly corrected and I've had zero issues since. It was like maybe two or three rounds, recognized it, dropped some oil in it, fixed the problem, we're good to go. So that is the current setup that I have and let's get into the new setup that I've got going on. It is basically, by and large, going to be exactly the same. And here it is, right here. So. <laughs> Again, we're running the Aero Precision M4E1 receiver sets. Um, the handguard, exactly the same. Flash suppressor is going to be a 30 cal version of the flash suppressor, um, flash hider rather, from Dead Air, Sandman. And um, yeah, pretty much everything else is the same. Pistol grip's the same. I did put a different barrel in and I have a different brace on it. So let's get into the specifics on this. First and foremost, this is not 5.56. This is a 300 blackout. And I went ahead and decided to change and move to the 300 blackout because of a video that I saw from Mr. Guns and Gear. And one of the things that I had always been contemplating is, is 300 blackouts a better option for home defense? And in my opinion, since then, since seeing that video, I actually believe, yes, it is. Um, it's a better option because of the variety of bullet weight and um, whether or not it's going to be supersonic or subsonic. You can really tune in a round 
uh, the 300 blackout round very, very precisely, especially if you reload uh, to fit your particular setup and to um, really be a good, good round for home defense. Now, this is uh, going to be a 10.5 inch barrel that I have on here. And one of the misnomers is um, people say, well, the 300 blackout is optimized for nine inch barrels. And that's not 100% true. Mr. Guns Gear does go into a lot of specifics on why that isn't true in his video when he talks about the different velocities of the 300 blackout round um, from different barrel lengths and different bullet weights. And he just really kind of geeks out on all of the, uh, the numbers of it. So um, that's what really kind of sold me uh, is seeing that I could take a 110 grain round and have it supersonic suppressed, uh, dampen the noise quite a bit and still have a 30 caliber round punch um, you know, move in pretty quickly. Now, it's not going to be the same speed as like a 5.56 round, but it's still 110 grains traveling really fast. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's freaking gonna be 30 cal round. So basically my perception is that it will be a kind of a bigger hammer. It, it will be moving a little bit slower, but it's still a bigger hammer, right? So that's kind of the, the mindset of why I'm switching. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. The, the barrel is, like I said, a 10.5 inch pistol length gas system, and it is a Faxon Firearms 300 blackout barrel. So I went ahead with Faxon Firearms. Um, Kind of, kind of contradict myself. I did talk about how I like to keep the barrel, receiver set, and bolt carrier group um, together. But I've been a big Faxon Firearms fan for a long time, so I went ahead and threw this on here. I reached out to them to see if I could go ahead and check one of these out. They said yes. So we're going to get uh, in future videos. We're going to get this out to the range, and we're going to do some. We're going to do some um, accuracy tests on different bullet weights. Uh, and once we're able to get my suppressor, we'll throw our suppressor on there and see how that changes point of impact, uh, see how they changes accuracy if it does at all, and, and go from there. So um, that basically covers it. Oh, let's get into the brace. Now I did talk about how my 5.56 version have the SBA-3. This is the SBA-4. Four, and the reason why I like this so much better than the SBA-3, not that it's any better, just the reason why I like it better, is the fact two things. One is the surface area right here is a, is a bit wider, so it feels so much better on the cheek. It feels like I have more real estate for my cheek to rest on than the SBA-3. So that's number one. Number two, Bigger surface area on the back here, which makes it for a lot more comfortable shooting experience. Now, one of the things that SBA, uh, SB Tactical said was they had gotten some um, they had gotten some feedback from their customers that they wanted the quick disconnect port to be moved from back here on the SBA3 up front, and that's what they did with this one. Um, a lot of people in a video that I did about this from SHOT Show when they first announced it, said that they didn't like that. And, and I can understand why. Uh, I, I understand that they would want it further back here. But all I did was I just took the quick disconnect piece off of my sling and I've wrapped it right through the brace itself. So that makes for a really, still a very comfortable shooting platform right there. So. Uh, about the only other difference that I have is I went ahead with a BCM charging handle. This is the BCM Mod 4 charging handle, and um, it's, a, it's different. I'm going to have to get used to it. Uh, it's not ambidextrous. It is still only one side, so um, I'll get pictures of it so you guys can see, but uh, eh, you know, we'll see what it's like and uh, go from there. So 
there you have it. There's the, there's the new version of what I am prepping for my home defense. Still need to get sights, um, iron sights for it, but I am running the Trigicar, Trigicon MRO. This was donated to the channel permanently from a huge supporter. Uh, Drew, thank you so much, man. I miss you, and I hope Alabama is treating you well. So that basically covers it here. Now, again, the reason why I am going to the 300 blackout is I want the flexibility to be able to pick and choose how exactly I want to suppress that round. It has a number of different bullet weights. Uh, you can choose between supersonic and subsonic, so you can really kind of, like I said, dial in the round for your specific setup. And once my suppressor comes out of FFL jail, then we'll really put it to the test. I may end up going back to the 5.56. I'm not getting rid of my other pistol. I may just end up going back to it, but as it stands right now, I think I'll have more success with the 300 blackout. But that's my question to you guys. What do you think? Am I making a mistake by going from 5.56 to 300 blackout, or am I making the right decision? One of the things, you know, one of the other things that you really need to, to consider is you're defending your home, so you're going to be in enclosed spaces. That's one of the things that I'm thinking I'm going to really like is if I move to a subsonic round to like a, what is it, uh, 205 or 220 grain um, projectile that is subsonic, that that's really going to dampen things down. It'll help me protect my hearing. It'll help my daughter protect her hearing should I ever need to defend my home. And I won't have to worry about scrambling around trying to find hearing protection, right? So... Um, that's kind of the direction I'm going with. I'd like to hear what your guys' opinion is on the 300 blackout. Am I making the right decision? Or should there be other considerations that I have to run 5.56? Or, you know, maybe some of you comm block guys say 762 by 39 and then suppress it. Or should I be running a pistol caliber carbine of some sort? Sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you guys think, man. That's what we're all about here is to uh, have a discussion and not only learn from myself, because this is kind of a journey for myself, but also to learn from you guys as well. So that would be pretty awesome. It's really all I got this time, man. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Thank you so very much. Uh, as always, my Patreon people, thank you so much for crushing it. Uh, it's a huge support. Uh, as I go through this demonetization phase and we'll see what happens here in the future but uh, as of right now your support really really helps the channel all right I got some really cool projects coming up here pretty soon so stay tuned and as always here comes a high five freedom through strength we'll catch you guys later bye y'all